Right, in this video, I'm gonna show you five pretty easy ways to improve your renders. So these are all things that as soon as I started doing them led to a massive improvement in my work. So I'll just show you the top things that I've done to, in my renders that have uh, helped me just improve the quality over time. So number one is try to use a full dynamic range in your renders. What I mean by this is usually in my renders, I'll try to aim for pixels in the image that are both fully white and other pixels in the same image that are fully all the way black. So for example, if we look in here, there's actually a filter on this one. So it, the, the pixels that would be black are actually brought up a little bit, but um, it's still a good demonstration where this is, if we zoom all the way in here, obviously there's pixels in here that are, if we zoom like fully all the way in on this section, there's gonna be pixels that are fully 100% white all the way up. Um, and then in the same picture, there's gonna be also pixels in here. If we zoom all the way in, like it's something way down here that are all pretty much all the way black. Like I said in here, there's a, a filter lifting the blacks a little bit, but um, in, in my other renders, like same thing in here, you know, if you look at, even though it might seem like an overall dark render or an overall really bright render in some cases, like if you zoom into, if you pay attention to the lightest spots and the darkest spots, there's often that range, that full range of some, sections even just a couple of pixels here and there that are fully white as and in the same image as well pixels that are all the way fully black and that just gives you a full range of brightness that you can work with and it just gives you like the maximum amount of punch and uh juiciness to use a technical term that um yeah you know a lot of people will struggle with like dull looking renders i find uh especially with beginners so if you're struggling with like dull renders that just don't have a lot of punch and uh just oomph to them try this out um the way i like to do it is in photoshop in the camera raw filter there's a slider for whites and there's a slider for blacks usually if you just hold alt I'll, I'll put a clip of this up if you hold alt and you move the slider it'll tell you which pixels are actually reaching that point of all the way white and, and all the way black depending on which slider you use so what i'll do in the camera raw filter is bring the whites up to the point where the pixels are some like the brightest areas are just starting to go like fully white and then in the black slider, I'll take the black slider down just to the point where some of the dark stairs are going fully all the way black. And, you know, depending on the image, I might adjust it more or less. But that's what I aim for so that I get a full range of brightness in my image. Okay, number two, you've heard me say this before if you've been watching my channel, but I'll say it again because it's so important. If you're not using Photoshop to edit your renders, I highly, highly, highly suggest you get it and just start using it straight away because it makes, if you, if you can use it properly, it makes your renders look better 100% of the time. Um, I've edited, like for the last couple of years, every single render I've ever done in Photoshop, still images at least. Um, for moving stuff, like for video, you can use After Effects. It's kind of like the Photoshop of video. But yeah, for still stuff, I just, I run every single render through Photoshop and it makes it a lot better every single time. So it's highly worth it. If you're watching this channel, you're probably somebody who's somewhat serious about this. And if you're somewhat serious about this, you should definitely have Photoshop. So just get it, honestly. It's not it's not that much either. You can get it for like 15 bucks a month, like the same price as Netflix um, or whatever, you know, similar. It's not, it's not like crazy expensive, you know, it's, it's 15 bucks a month. You can probably afford it. Um, if you can't, I don't know, get more money and save up and then get it because this has made it possible for me to do what I do using Photoshop. And I'd highly recommend you get it because you just can't get the same look without it. So definitely start using that because it makes a massive difference to the kind of quality that you can produce. Okay, number three is do as much as you can in 3D, in Blender in my case, before you bring it into Photoshop. So although Photoshop is a very powerful, powerful tool that you can use to massively enhance the quality of your image, I, I suggest getting it as good as possible in 3D before you try and bring it into Photoshop. And here's why. What I used to do all the time is I'd be working on a render and it would, it would not be going well. And I would just at a certain point, like three quarters of the way through, just kind of give up and say, fuck it. We're just gonna bring this into Photoshop and just run it through the camera raw filter, slam it with clarity, slam it with contrast, slam it with saturation. And then maybe I can hopefully salvage this garbage render into something that's like actually good. So I'd take the garbage render, bring it through Photoshop, slam it through these settings, and then it would look okay at the end. And it's like, okay, cool. We got a, like an okay render. The thing is, the camera raw filter, the, the way I like to think about it is it kind of like, it almost amplifies whatever you've made in Blender to kind of like an extreme version of that. So if you if you end up with like 
a shitty render and you bring it, run it through the camera raw filter, it kind of makes it like a more extreme, like it just increases the, the badness of it sometimes. And even if it makes it better, it's not going to be as good as if you get it as good as possible in Blender first, then bring it to Photoshop. It's kind of like, imagine you're going from like okay quality in Blender to good quality in Photoshop. Whereas if you do what I'm saying, you make it as good as possible in Blender first to the point where you start with something good, then you bring it into Photoshop. Now you have something excellent. That's kind of the way I think about it. And that's what's helped me with, with my renders a lot. And I find when I do it that way, it always turns out better. Um, so give that a try and I think it'll probably massively help if you're not doing that. Okay. Number three is adding small details, especially stuff that's like cluttered on the floor is actually very easy and it makes it look a lot better. Here's an example of that right here. So this is a render I did, I don't even know, a long time ago. If I open this in a new tab and kind of zoom in on here, there's all these small little details on the floor of like ancient pots and pieces of armor and chairs and just all this stuff everywhere all that stuff is actually um like if we take the pots for example that is not something hard to model like even if you've never modeled before i'm sure you could figure out a way to create that shape like that ancient pot kind of shape or something similar you know what i mean like things like this don't have to be crazy complicated i know we've got like pieces of armor you can, that's you know that's an exception here but for the most part these kinds of details on my renders are all very simple shapes um like I don't know, things hanging from a chain or like incense burners or yeah, things like this. Like if we look at this here, open this up in a new tab, like just things hanging from a chain or like um, all this stuff on the ground. You can see like these tomb type things. If you look at what that is, it's like a very simple model, a very, you know, cubic type thing. Slap a circle on top, add some bevels and extrusions. We've got some ancient pots again, just stuff I've made before and just reused in this render. So if you just like think about the kind of place that you're making, if you're making environments and just think about what kind of objects you would just kind of randomly find laying around there and just make a few of those and just duplicate them all around the scene. And you can get just a, a ton of extra detail and it makes it look like there's so much more life happening. Like it's been, this place has been lived in for so much longer and it's all really easy stuff to make. Like it's, you know, take a basic sphere or basic cylinder and you kind of just morph it into the shape that looks like a pot or something use a reference photo so you can get a bit more of an accurate shape you know do that a few times and then you've got these all these objects that you can just scatter around your scene to make it so much more complex and and just interesting to look at just add so much character and, and just yeah like it feels more like it's lived in if you do this and this stuff again it's not hard like you could just you can even download packs you can just make your own stuff um it's just keep it simple. Use a reference photo. One thing that I found that has been a very good source of just ideas for this kind of stuff is in video games. They do this extremely well where if, if you play a game with like a really dense environment, just pay attention to like all the different models they use and how each model individually is always pretty simple. But when you look at them all together in a massive environment with tons of different, tons of different simple models everywhere, then it looks really, really complex. And it looks like, how the hell do you make that? When really, it's just a bunch of these simple shapes distributed around in a, in a nice, pleasing way. So yeah, don't be afraid of stuff like that. Just take it piece by piece. Take it step by step. Look at one object at a time. Make one thing at a time. And then before you know it, you'll have a bunch of these things saved in your browser that you can just reuse in future projects. And then it you know, it compounds over time. The more you make, save it to your browser. Now you just have more and more and more stuff that you can use, uh, more tools in your tool belt, if you will. Okay, number five is photography skills will help you tremendously. So before I started learning Blender, I spent a couple of years actually just doing camera stuff. So going downtown, taking a camera, just going with friends, just trying to get cool pictures, learning Photoshop. I wouldn't say it's definitely not necessary to like spend two years just like grinding photography to get good at Blender. It's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is it gave me a massive advantage when I first started. So when I was when I was just learning Blender, I was not good at this at all, but I was actually still able to make really cool looking images. Looking back now, maybe maybe they weren't so cool or good, but at the time they seemed actually quite interesting. I'd post them on like the Blender subreddit. They might get like thousands of upvotes sometimes. Um, and it was just, I wasn't even good at Blender at all. I was completely trash at it. And yet it looked, 
it looked cool in the end. And the reason was because I knew how to use a camera. I knew the basics of lighting. I knew how to just capture things in a pleasing way. That's really what photography is, is just capturing things that exist already in a way that is nice. And that's what we're doing here. We're just doing a digital simulated version of photography. All the same settings that you use on a camera, you're gonna find in Blender. It's gonna be slightly different, but you'll if you know what they do on a camera, you'll know how it works in 3D. And um, so what I would suggest is if you've never touched a camera before, just you start using a camera and just go out and take cool pictures. If you can't afford a camera or you don't have one, use your phone. That will that will still give you a good idea of the kind of angles that would make sense to use in a camera. Um, because like what happens is in in Blender in 3D, you have this camera that's like if if you were to tran if you were to take that camera that's in 3D, you would basically have the most overpowered ridiculous camera ever created because you can like you have unlimited f-stop control unlimited focal length control you can fly like it's it's the most ridiculous camera ever you have unlimited power with that camera and what happens is if you don't know like the realistic settings to use it's very easy to just toast your image because you can just go way overkill with f-stop or you can go like up to a ridiculous angle that would never make sense or you just don't know how to capture things in a way that are like uh, uh, makes sense for a camera to to be in like the positioning so what I, what I would suggest is just go out even with your phone, to just try and get some cool pictures here and there. And over time, you'll, you'll kind of realize what makes sense for a camera to do and what doesn't. And you can apply that to 3D directly. Like the skills you learn there will directly apply to Blender and they'll help you capture images in a much more pleasing way. Because again, that's all, that's all photography is. Um, it's just capturing images in a pleasing way. Capturing, excuse me, capturing images in a pleasing way, things that already exist. Like... It's kind of the art of making anything look good. So imagine that, like if you can make literally anything look good, now what happens if you take that into a 3D scene that's like, you know, you make some crazy complex, insane 3D construction environment. Now you take those photography skills and you put it on top of that and you capture it in a way that actually looks nice. Now you're talking like that's now you're getting serious, you know? So that's why I'd highly recommend it is because, you know, Good photography skills can compensate for lack of 3D skills, but la like insane 3D skills, the best 3D skills ever, cannot compensate for a lack of ability to capture things pleasingly, right? So like I see this all the time where people will make the most insanely complex models, the best modeling you've ever seen in your entire life, like way, way, way beyond what I could ever do with modeling. Texturing, it's like... the crazy texturing and then they they can't capture it in a way that looks nice in a 2d image right because when you render it it becomes 2d um and it's like it's it's so sad to see that because it's like all this hard work has gone into this thing at the very end when they're presenting it it doesn't look good just because of that one lacking skill of being able to present this thing in a nice way like being able to capture it nicely so that's, again, why I'd highly recommend photography is because you can be bad at everything else, but if you get good at that one thing, you'll still be able to make cool stuff. So yeah, um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that. I guess this like, entire video just turned about turned into like photography tips, but that's it is very important. It is like the most important skill, just like camera and lighting skills. If you can do that, you're pretty much going to be good. Um, so yeah, that was five things, like five pretty easy ways to enhance the quality of your renders. I know learning, like learning photography, you don't need to like fully learn it and become an expert photographer, obviously, but I'm just saying, learn a bit of photography skills, follow some photographers online, go and watch like Peter McKinnon on YouTube. And uh, over time that will just naturally translate into Blender. So yeah, I hope that helps you. Um, yeah, I don't know, go make some cool renders. Thanks for watching. Go and watch this video right here and